Alright. Assalamualaikum. Uh, welcome back. Okay. Uh, you have break. I also have break, right? I hope you're clear with me. Okay. And uh, the the voice as well. I hope that uh, it clear to you all. Okay. Uh, so just now um, we stop at uh, classical trade theory. We still in the same topic, topic three, international trade and investment theory. So for those who recently with me, um, again a greeting, assalamualaikum, and a very good. Now is uh, already evening. Okay, so it's already good evening to all. Uh, I hope that everybody had lunch. Okay, uh, I just have some brunch, <laughs> breakfast plus lunch. Um. How about you all? Okay, I hope that you fine. Okay, so I will proceed to the next one with uh, the modern firm based theory as I promised to you all the last video for the part one. So I will continue on the part two. Part two huh? for the part two. Okay, so under part two, we have the modern film based trade theories. Okay, um, yeah, okay. As I just recap back, okay. Uh, in this topic, we have two types. Okay, the first one we have uh, classical trade theories versus versus firm based theory. And for the classical trade theory, we have absolute advantage. We have mercantilism. Uh, sorry, mercantilism, absolute advantage, cooperative advantage, cooperative advantage with money, and also relative factor endowments. And for the firm. For the modern firm based theory, we have uh, country simulatory theory, product life cycle theory, global strategic rivalry theory, and also Porter's national competitive advantage. All right. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay. Uh, with the recitation of uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay. Um, yeah, all sudden, right? Okay. Uh, I just want to recite it. So that's why, uh, yeah. Just to tell you all, okay, before I proceed, okay, why is the reason we have to learn classical and modern firm based theory? Because um, it's about international trade, okay, and how does international trade start, okay, because of this, those theories, okay, and those theories is uh, have some revolutions. So before this, uh, we use like, um, not we, not our time, but it's maybe a long time ago. During maybe our grandpa, our grandma times, right? Okay, um, and it's been have some revolution, and now we have the group of of the firm based theory. Okay, just to recap back for the classical trade theory, we have five, and for uh the modern firm based theory, we have four. Okay, if you want me to repeat again, okay, the four one is country similarity theory. Product life cycle theory, global strategy, rivalry theory, and also Porter's national competitive advantage. All right. So why we have the modern firm based theory? Okay. So the first one, the growing importance of MNC. The reason why we do we have the modern firm based theory because we do have the the growing importance of the MNC. What is MNC? Multinational corporation, which is more than one country is expanding around the world. Okay, and the country is expanding their product and services, and we cannot say that one country is only for one product, as I mentioned before. And the second one, inability of the country-based theories to explain and predict the existence and the growth of intra-industry trade. Okay, intra-industry trade is mentioning about like what we have, okay, before, okay. Which is uh one country different product and it cannot have like one country have similar products. So let's say like Malaysia we do produce proton and maybe and some other around um we also uh produce also product. So it's not allowed that. So in the previous years ago, but nowadays it can okay, because of the growth of the modern firm based theory. Okay. Meaning to say in one country you can have more than one product. And more than one product meaning to say you can produce proton product, you can have like another products around you. Okay. So the country is able to produce how much they're able to produce. And failure of the 
Leontief and others to empirically validate country-based Heckscher Olin theory. According to Heckscher Olin theory, it's about the abundance of the product will be produced the product. I mean, when the country having abundance resources. So how we want to measure how long that the country have the abundance resources. So it have too complicated to measure, right? Okay, and according to the firm based trade theory, as you see from this text, okay, from the slide, uh, it incorporates the additional factor into explanation of the trade flows. So, additional factor in the trade flows is about quality, it's about technology, it's about brand names, and it's about customer quality. Okay, so when we're talking about these things, okay, quality. Okay, uh, how the one customer is uh, having the quality satisfaction. Actually, it's based on what it expect from you. Okay, so uh, meaning to say, um, the quality cannot just say that, uh, what to say? The quality is not just persist that uh, based on the uh, saying that I'm, have satisfaction towards this product. This product equality, so I satisfy. No, because single customer they have a different in terms of the quality satisfaction. Okay, and so do with the technology. And each of the product able to have their technology depend on how actually they they retrieve on that. Okay, and we are talking about how does the technology able to uh, attract okay the attentions of the customer to use their product and nowadays during this covid time right covid 19 time you you realize or not how does uh, the services able to be like mushrooming okay in um in terms of the online services online banking online shopping as everything is head to toe is about online <laughs> you realize that and if i'm not mistaken i'm um, uh, listen up and watch the news the prime news okay they, st they stated during um if i'm wrongly fi figure and facts uh please uh correct me on that huh? um during the april month in malaysia we're talking about malaysia environment huh? economic environment is about um negative 24.6 okay negative 24.6 uh, we call as KDNKK. We're talking about our uh, gross uh, domestic product. Okay, we need to say it's flop. Okay, the economy is quite slow because everybody have to be stay at home and there is no like um, export import being done because due to uh, those we call as MCO, RMO, huh? movement of order from the government and so forth. And surprisingly, when uh, started in around June month, okay, um, when all the company, especially like MNC, start to grow and the government is giving some, what we call uh, permission, okay, authority, some uh, um, announcement in order to open up back, okay, open back and uh, operating back as usual and um, this uh, KDNKK, okay, uh, it's like gross domestic product okay uh, from 20, negative 24.6 is uh, increased to negative 3.6 right now and it's really like giving some impact because um, the economy start to have like it's been stated by the minister of uh, uh, our uh, financial uh, finance okay minister of finance saying that uh, there will be like a big curve there okay Meaning to say the economic growth is quite improved well, okay, due to this, okay. And I believe that uh, every sector, okay, it's not just about education, our industry, but it's all sector, okay, giving such impact on we want to rebuild back, okay. I believe that Indonesia also the same way around, okay, uh, to improve the economic as well, okay. So, um, why relate? Because we're talking about quality technology, okay, and um also i'm talking about the brand names okay we're talking about the brand names of the product also influence okay in this kind of the modern firm based theory because it able to influence the customer to loyal to the certain product and the last one is about customer quality um we're talking about the customer quality right i mean to say how does the customer perceive the quality? I told you before, because quality satisfaction for each person will be totally different. And 
uh, bear in mind when we're talking about these differences, okay, of course, we want to make sure that we can exceed, okay, the satisfaction of the customer as well, rather than the customer complaints. When the customer start complaints, me meaning to say that your product, your services is out of track, okay, it might be maybe run away from your real target market or real benchmark okay so that's why we have to make sure that we we try to be consistent we have to be very persistent okay to have a very good quality product we bear with the consequences somehow is unpredictable like what happened in pandemic right now okay and currently maybe the suppliers the raw materials is difficult to get but we still try the best okay in order to to meet the certain of the quality benchmark, right? And then um, the the talk we're talking about the first one, country similarity theory. Okay, it's explain the phenomenon of the intra industry trade. Okay, intra industry trade meaning to say the trade between the two countries of the goods produced by the same industry. Okay, I told you before, like Malaysia, we are produce proton, and maybe other country like US is produce Toyota. Okay, and US is producing Toyota and there will be a different products okay um sorry um not Toyota US is Ford right okay and Toyota is Japan okay so they have produced the same industry that we call as automobile okay so Japan export Toyotas to Germany and Germany export BMW to Japan so both these um example of the intra industry trade because we are talking about the same industry okay inter industry trade we are talking read my lips and hear it carefully eh? e i n t r i n d u s t r y inter industry trade that one is different industry but intra industry trade is talking about the same industry okay so different uh, uh different country but in a similar industry will be under intra-industry trade. Okay, so the trade result from similarities of the preferences among the consumer in the countries, they are the same stage of the economic development. So meaning to say like Germany and Japan, they have the same in terms of their GDP. Okay, gross domestic, domestic product, meaning to say they are developed country. I used to the words developed, meaning to say that the country is already developed. Well, by like Malaysia and other countries, mostly ASEAN countries, we are in developing country. So we are in the stage of the economic, same of economic development. And most of the trade in the manufacturing goods should be between the countries with similar per capita incomes. Okay. So this is talking about um, country territory mostly. Um, for my previous student, I used something like my map notes, you know. Uh, inshallah, if I have that ample time, I will create it in the soft copy form and I will upload in new. But somehow for now, I'm not doing it because <laughs> that note is left in office. But it's okay. Uh, that one is only for my map for the modern film based theory. Okay, I will, later I will... Uh, Inshallah, huh? uh, inshallah, I will share it with you all. Okay, uh, it's only just my mate for modern film based theory. Okay, last time I used that. Okay, so the second one is product life cycle theory. Okay, this one actually you already learned in marketing subject principle of marketing, and if basically like product life cycle theory, we have four stages. We have the first one new products by introduction. Okay, then second one we have growth. The third one, we have maturity and the last one, we're talking about decline stage. But in the international business, okay, we have these stages, okay, describe the evolution of the marketing strategy under the stages uh, in the PLC curve, huh? in, because it's S curve, okay, it's used like S, okay, S curve, okay, bento S, okay, and the stages is new product, maturing uh, product and standardized products, because this is this on the international business uh, perspective okay and if you realize in here okay and you can see the graph okay how the blue color is uh, referring to the export and the red color is referring to the import okay and how does uh, the product for the new stage stage one stage two maturity and move to the stage three is already go for exporting and uh, if let's say it's um, intertwined, okay, meaning to say the the curve is uh, 
meet it together with the export, okay, uh, the red color, okay, and it's under standardized product. If the product is being imported, meaning to say it's already stable product. To understand this, because uh, for this first curve, is re is uh, referring to the innovating firm country. So meaning the country is used to develop the new research and development product. And when the another country start to import the product, meaning to say it's already at the uh, standardized product, at the standardized product stages. Okay. And second curve, if you see the other industrialized country, okay. And you realize or not, they have some blue also red color here. And for the under industrialized uh, country, for the new stage, okay, um, new product stage one, stage two, mostly the consumption is in the red color here. They are import the products, okay, because for their consumption, penggunaannya sendiri untuk negara tersebut. And when the product is already standardized, they will export it, okay. Maybe uh, we can take like example, okay, like um rice okay product yang melibatkan consumption household consumption okay first at stage one stage two we will use for the local okay for the local after that uh, after it's enough is sufficient for the local demand then we start to export it to the another country who need our product okay and the third one we have product life cycle for the less developed country okay um, in here, they're talking about like the first stages, okay, because less developed country, meaning to say the country is, I can say like developing, but they are less developed, kurang membangun lah. Huh? They are start with the consumption, they will import because they're less developed country, they don't have any kind to export yet. Huh? And then at the last stage, they will go for export, but they also is very minimal in terms of the export because the country itself, maybe in terms of half. Uh, maybe in terms of the raw materials is very scarce, very limit. Okay. Okay. So maybe I can take like example country like South Africa. Uh, so this is example for that. And other industrial countries in here, maybe we can take like uh, countries that are very good in like Japan. Okay. Uh, according to just now, I give example like rice, right? 90% okay, Japan is producing their own rice. Only 10% that import from other country. So meaning to say that they use their own first. Okay, they use their own first. Uh -huh. So it's very rare to have like their rice for sale because they will use for the local purposes first. Okay, and then we have the third one, global strategic rivalry. Okay, uh, theory. We have the third one, the firm struggle to develop sustainable competitive advantage. Okay. What is competitive advantage? Okay, um, kita kata persaingan sehat, persaingan baik, persaingan yang memberi kebaikan. Yeah, okay. Uh, advantage provide ability to dominate the global market space, uh, marketplace, and it focus strategic decision from used to compete internationally. So mostly, how we want to sustain? How does the country want to sustain their competitive advantage? Number one. They owning the intellectual property rights. Remember, in chapter two, I do have uh, sharing with you all regarding um what is uh, brand name, trademark, okay? What is uh with patent, uh, copyrights, okay? We're talking about um the intellectual property rights itself, okay? And each um the company, okay, and each the company represent their own um copyright, brand name, trademark, okay? To tell that how well and how strong the company are. If the company couldn't have their own brand, they don't have their patent trademark and also their copyrights, meaning to say the company is a very lack in terms of their research and development. Why I say so, maybe maybe they do have some R&D, but in terms of to invest on that, they have some maybe lacking and insufficient of uh, capital. However, to have owning and become the owner of intellectual property, right? Meaning to say, the company is at the very uh, stable and very outstanding enough. Because as you can see, like company Apple, 
Samsung, okay, IBM, Microsoft, okay, Facebook, okay, what else? All the prominent names, brand name that you have heard before in the, the world, this is the, they are owning the, their own intellectual property rights. Huh? And then investing in research and development, uh, we are talking about R&D because bear in mind every single, when you want to make it, your intellectual property rights okay we're talking we cannot run away and we cannot un, uh, how to say undeniable about this R&D okay because you are investing you are a portion of the money capital of the company um, profit for example or maybe the company cap capital itself is already been invested a portion goes to the R&D and this is something like we can say we can't say this is something to be put into lightly because when we invest something to huge investment we expecting more to come return on investment right you learn in finance class right high return meaning to say high investment high investment high in return okay roi return on investment and the third one achieving economies of scale or scope uh, i do explain this one in the class i do thoroughly mentioning what is economies of scale okay economies of scale meaning to say when you are producing more the lower the cost okay the producing the more the lower the cost is it same with the scope yeah scale is based on each quantity but scope is based on their scope the more the scope is actually produced the less the scope okay example if you cannot differentiate okay economies of scale like this I ask you to maybe photocopy, okay? Do some copies in photocopy center, okay? Your notes maybe front back, okay? How much only per piece, okay? Maybe the photocopy center only charge you 20 cents. Ringgit Malaysia, 20 cents, huh? Okay. So, um, if I ask the same notes to be print out or to be photo state, to be make a copy, like 100 copies, from 20 cents, maybe the, the comfort, Copo, uh, photocopy center will be reduce the price from 20 cents maybe become 5 cents okay because you photocopy much in terms of the quantity and bear in mind we use the paper one rim and we not sell it per piece right uh, so the more you produce the lower the cost okay that one is economies of scale economies of scope is referring like this okay example um, in Nike factory, okay, we have apparel for women, apparel for men, apparel for children. Apparel for women, they produce 30,000 units of apparel for women. For apparel for men, it's 50,000 units. For children, it's only 1,000, let's see. So, in terms of the scope, they are very high in here is apparel for men. So, apparel for men will be lower the cost because they can produce more in apparel for men compared to women and also children okay that is according to the scope sub business unit for example and exploiting the experience curve we are talking about the curve itself just now we're talking about plc right in terms of the new product maturity stage and also standardized stage and we're talking about product life cycle in the marketing class we have introduction maturity sorry in uh, introduction growth uh, maturity and decline stage Experience the curve meaning to say you experience the S curve, whether it in the right track or maybe the product might be goes down at the decline stage. Huh? Okay, now we're moving on to the next one, the Porter's National Competitive Advantage. Okay, um, bear in mind, okay, because mostly this uh, theory been done by in the modern classical theory, sorry, modern from this theory, mostly um, the theory has been done by the professors, university, compared like in the classical theory, mostly it's done and uh, imposed by those um, economists, okay? Uh, so there will be totally two different way around how the thinking skill, huh? All right, and then um, Porter's National Competitive Advantage, success in trade comes from the interactions of the four countries and the firm specific elements such as factor condition, demand condition, related and supported industry, firm strategies, uh, structure and rivalry. Okay, if you can see from here, there is four elements here. We have Porter's, Diamond, 
Uh, okay, so we have factor condition, demand condition, um, related and supported industry and firm strategy, structure and rewarding. Okay, so the first one we're talking about factor condition. Okay, factor condition we're talking about what is the factor of production? Remember you learn in economic class, we have land, labor, capital, we have entrepreneur, okay? So this is the factor condition on how you have to bear in mind when you are doing something, we have to actually bear all the consequences and this factor of production. Okay, we have to find out which is the low uh, cost of the labor, who is the entrepreneur. Entrepreneur has to come up with how to get the low labor cost, how to get like um, a strategic location, lab, uh, land, example, and how to get the startup capital. And entrepreneurs itself they have to be have a very good characteristic to be enthusiastic. They have to be pessimist. They have to be not pessimistic. Eh? They have to be optimistic. They have to be passionate. They have to be assertiveness. So they have a lots of the condition that we learn in entrepreneurship class, right? Okay. For demand condition, we are talking about who is demand for your products. Okay. I like to relate with a certain in a, my consumer behavior class. We have. For example, whether it uh, uh, what we call high end customer, we have low level customer, middle classes, we have low level classes. So, the demand of your product, where your product will be located, whether who is your target market for your product. Remember, target market, we are talking about who is the party, who is your target market that afford to pay your products, right? And then when we're talking about the firm strategy, structure and rivalry, what is your strategy, firm strategy? Whether you go for uh, low cost, okay, low cost strategy or maybe you go for differentiation strategy or maybe you want to go for um, in terms of um, uh, quick, okay, uh, quick services. Uh, fast responsiveness okay in terms of services so which is actually your strategy and when we're talking about a structure and rivalry we are talking about who is your competitors remember when we're talking about competitors it must be within the same industry okay if you are mcdonald you are competing with kfc you are to, uh, you are competing with um uh who else uh kfc mcdonald uh pizza hut okay what else? Uh, uh, who is that? Pizza Hut and then we, uh, Pizza Hut with um, what we call a uh, Domino's. Okay, and then we have Starbucks because it's around food and beverages industry. Microsoft, we have Sony, we have what else? Apple. Okay, they have many. Okay, and we must be within the same industry. Okay. And related and supported industry for your product itself, they must be supporters. Supporting industry meaningful to say in order to make one phone, like example, one phone, right? We need something like glass, okay? We need something like chip inside. We need something like uh, in terms of line itself, telecommunication industry itself. Okay, we need who else, okay, inside to make uh, some, yeah, all those things to make one phone is related after all. Huh? The intense competitiveness of Japanese market forces manufacturers to continually develop and fine tune new products. So, um, yeah, in Japanese, not only talking about Japanese market, it's all market around the world. It has the intense competitiveness. And bear in mind, Chinese is uh, very intense too, okay? Today, you have uh, Samsung made in Korea, South Korea, example. So, tomorrow, you will have uh, exactly like this Samsung phone made in China. So, remember, they can able to copyright your product as well as, as fast, okay? Because of their raw, low cost of material, of course. Huh? All right, and then uh, we're moving on to the next one, okay? Theories of international trade. These are... Uh, can I say that this is not table, but this input, okay, okay, that started here is already sum up, okay, and summarize the whole of our chapter by topic three. Why I say so? In my left side here is about country-based theory. In my right side is about firm-based theory, right? Okay. Uh, a few semesters ago, this is what I come up with my final exam AC question. Because you have to differentiate between what is country-based theory and firm-based theory. So, as you can see from here, 
country-based theory, they based on the country is a unit of analysis. Okay. And whereby for the firm-based theory, they based on the firm. So that's why I'm mentioning just now to you all, it's about Apple company, Samsung company. And in the country-based theory, I'm mentioning about France, it's talking about China, Japan. Okay, because why? Arab Saudi, we have the unit of analysis based on the country. That one is country-based theory, which is classical theory. For the firm, modern firm-based theory is about Firm based theory is about firm, okay, and it emerged prior to World War Two. When is the World War Two? Nineteen forty six. Meaning to say, country based theory is long time ago. That's why I mentioned it before in a part one. If you still remember Adam Smith in nineteen twenty, he is one of the scholars of economics. Okay, during the World War before the World War Two, and uh, whereby it emerged after the World War Two, which is a firm based theory. It's after nineteen forty six. Meaning to say, like. I mentioned to you, uh, we have the school professor, but I'm not mentioned to you that Michael Porter, Michael Porter, who actually the professor from Harvard School who are um, invented this uh, Porter's National Theory, third theory. Okay, for uh, the third one is developed by economists uh, Adam Smith. Okay, we have Stephen Linden. Okay, and then the third one uh, for the firm based theory we have developed by business school professor. We have. Michael Porter, not Michael Jackson. No? And then the fourth one explain inter-industry trade. So inter-industry trade meaning to say different industry. Different country have to develop different industry. Okay. And uh, different product, different industry. And explain intra-industry trade meaning to say you uh, invent, invent it, you produce. Okay. It's similar product in a different country. Huh? And includes, uh, this, this is I mentioned to you earlier in part one, if you still remember, we do have mentioned tourism. We have five actually. Mentioned tourism, absolute advantage, cooperative advantage, cooperative advantage with money. And the last one, we have relative factor endowment. Okay. And for the firm-based theory, we have includes country similarity theory, product life cycle theory, global strategic rivalry, and the last one, national competitive advantage. Okay. And the last one, okay, the types of the international investment, okay, they said in here, why do we need, okay, this, okay, does the investor seek an active management role in the firm are merely a return from a passive investment? So, they do have these two that we learned in the first topic, okay, if you still remember under the activities in international business, we do have international investment divided into two foreign direct investment and foreign portfolio investment the thing that you are really mad to me during the quiz one remember uh, actually they do have foreign portfolio investment even the notes also not put that but in the full term they do have two okay foreign direct investment and foreign portfolio investment fdi versus fpi okay foreign direct uh, investment the investment is the purpose to control Foreign portfolio investment is the investment mostly they buy the certain um, financial product in a case not to control. Okay, they have two different between these two. Huh? Okay, international investment theory, we have ownership advantages, internalization theory, and also duning electric theory. Okay, what is this? In topic six, we will go more deeper on this, but it's okay. But this one, we can just uh, read it. Okay, okay, what is under ownership advantage? A firm owning a valuable asset that creates a competitive advantage domestically can use that advantage to penetrate foreign markets through FDI. So why FDI and not other methods? Because FDI, uh, they move to the internalization theory. Actually, I'm hearing raining outside. I'm in Ampang. How about you all? Yeah. Is somewhere around, right? Okay, so FDI is more likely to occur when the transaction costs with the second firm are high. So meaning to say, uh, yeah, it could be using FDI when our second firm have the transaction cost is more higher. So what is the transaction cost? Okay, transaction costs include like um, costs associated with negotiating, monitoring, and enforcing a contract. Example, okay. Let's say Indonesia company want to make transaction with Malaysia. Okay, so Malaysia, our currency is quite higher, right? So when we're talking about this thing, okay, uh, second firm in Malaysia is have a different price on that. 
So that's why the why we have to do this FDI foreign direct investment because the in the foreign direct investment there will be transaction costs. So the transaction costs involving this thing, okay, negotiate. Monitoring and bear in mind all these transaction costs enforcing a contract and the contract is not done purposely by the company itself But they have together with the lawyer the lawyer of the company and of course enforcing a contract is something like to be have legal And we have to do everything from A to Z in order to make sure that this contract is valid Okay, so there has a lot lots of procedure on that and the last one we have the unique electric theory FDI reflects both international business activity and business activity internal to the firm. So we have three conditions for FDI. Okay, we have ownership advantage, location advantage, and internalization advantage. For more details, I want you to read in your long notes in your and make sure you know what's mean ownership advantage, location advantage, international advantage. Ownership advantage, for example, I just simplify it now. Huh? The company is having like intellectual property that we mentioned before. We have trademark, we have like uh, um, what we call copyrights, we have a patent, uh, brain names, location advantage, the location advantage towards the country, home country especially. Let's say they want to do um, expanding the market to maybe another country. Let's say they choose Japan. Uh, sorry, let's say they choose China. China because of low cost of the raw materials and also low cost of the uh, labor. Okay, so the location advantage towards China. Okay, all right. Okay, and then the third one, internalization advantage. We're talking about how you expanding outside. Okay, let's say you want to go for, let's like, say, franchising or licensing strategy. When you go for internationalize, whether the country is giving you some benefits, okay, and whether you can get win win situation, of course, you have to pay tariff. At the same time, the country will get some portion profit from your tariff and whether you can have in law a way, uh, return, okay, because you have to sustain the business in long time. Uh, so, that is to simplify, uh, but I want you to have further reading in your new, okay. And then, um, this is the factors affecting FDI decision. Actually, they have supply factors, demand factors, and political factors. As you can see, under supply factors, we have production costs, we have logistic, we have resource availability, we have access to technology, okay? And then uh, we do also under demand factors, we have customer access, marketing advantages, exploitation of competitive advantage and customer mobility. And for political factors, we have avoidance of the trade barriers, economic development incentive. And the last one, IKEA aggressively export its furniture to other country. Example, in Malaysia, we do have in um, Mutiara Damansara, okay. For those Indonesian, please come to Malaysia. We do have uh, actually more than one uh, branches for IKEA. Okay, how about your country? I think that, yeah, maybe I, I we could share together, right? Okay, and uh, we also have in Cheras, we have in Tebrau, okay, they have more than one. Because local people in here is really favor on this their product, okay. And just to share with you all, if I'm wrong, correct me, okay. Uh, the history of IKEA, how IKEA started, okay, it start with uh, one grandpa, okay, the idea of DIY concept, do it yourself, okay, and sit together with the grandchildren under the tree, and suddenly the children are uh, the grandchildren, the grandson, and also granddaughter want some you know, some uh, place to see it. So, what this uh, this grandfather do is just plucking certain like uh, part of the trees and then they do something like stool, you know, stool, small chairs for the children, okay? And then how is that? Uh, it come across with the idea how we want to make, yeah, how we can make this idea by create, do it yourself, furniture, like furniture, yeah, stool is a part of the furniture by exporting to all the country. I do not know whether you believe me or not, but this is how I read it at certain part in IKEA, okay? And this is how the, the story started of IKEA implementing of the concept DIY. Thank you for today and thank you for listening for my live lecture on Sunday is one day and hashtag please keep social distancing. Hashtag please uh, keep sanitizing, washing your hand twice while singing a song, birthday song, and make sure 
uh, don't placing uh, your mask under the chin, okay? And if you want to eat, just take it out and then put into the plastic. This is our advice from Ministry of Health, okay? So, uh, furthermore, I want you, if any question rising about this chapter, this topic, please just shoot the question inside uh, our official WhatsApp group. And then um, for more details, just to re gentle reminder, uh, for quiz two will be topic three, topic four. After topic four settle, then we have uh, quiz two. Okay, and then um, hashtag please subscribe to those who are not subscribe yet to my channel. Subscribe Nushalina Nordin. Okay, alright. Thank you so much. Uh, it's almost two thirty. Okay, so I hope that everybody um yeah have a nice weekend. Bye. Assalamualaikum. Ready?